My name is John Palladino, and I am better known as Little John. I grew up here in North Jersey, mostly around Garfield, Lodi area. My father owned a pizzeria, and it was called Big John's Pizza. But everybody would come in and say, hey, Big John, and then they say, hey, Little John. You know, obviously I grew a lot bigger than Little John, so it just stuck with me as a nickname. Um, growing up, my family, we were Catholics. So we were mostly holiday Catholics. And uh, after that, my religious experience was based around a girl that I had a crush on. So I would go to this church and this youth things because I liked this girl. But I never had in my head a thought to say, you know, I want to be that. I mean, I didn't like, you know, push anybody down who did it. It was more like, it's not for me. And I just felt more like I wanted to do what I wanted to do and I wanted to you know, be bad. I was involved with organized crime and was basically like a bodyguard for a boss in North Jersey. But I also was very successful at collecting money. So I was sort of a coveted person in terms of in the inner workings of the family because what do you do if you lend someone 100000 and they tell you, ah, I'm not giving it to you. You know, one of my favorite tactics was to show up at somebody's house early in the morning when right? they were getting ready to go to work. And I'd be standing there with a cup of coffee like, yo, what's up, you got the money? No. But all right, and I would have a cup full of gas and I would throw it in their face. And I'd be like, tomorrow I'm coming back with the matches. So my life has been sort of geared around that mentality. You address things with violence and you get what you want by being the strongest and the, the most vicious person you could be. What would you prefer, to be the lion or the lamb? In those years, I preferred the lion. You know, I had been four times in prison and every time that I've been incarcerated, I've always gone into that with the mindset of how to be a better criminal. But when I was out and I did, you know, learn different things, I applied them, which was basically what led to my next incarceration. So when I made it to Mid-State, I was doing um, a seven year flat. Get there, go to my bed, set up my area, make my bed, put whatever little belongings I have into my locker. And um, I look over and I see a young man sitting in his area and I'm, you know, hello, how you doing? We introduced ourselves, I'm Little John, his name was Matt, Matt Mayer. I don't know what it was about Matt, but from the very beginning that I met him, I just had an affinity for him. I liked him very much, I just, I just liked him. And because I liked him so much, I took it upon myself to basically be like, you know, like Matt's with me, like nobody better even look at this kid wrong or they're gonna have to deal with me. I'm gonna say maybe it was about a week or two into like us talking that Matt you know, was saying he wanted to start a Bible study. So I'm like, yo, listen, whatever you wanna do, man, like I got your back. Although I'm not interested in it, I'll still sit there with you just to make sure you're good. I'm like a bouncer per se. So I'll never forget it. Um, Matt had invited me to church one night. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take a walk. I'll go with you. And we get to church and there's this like little old man down there. He's like got tattoos and he's just, you know, he gets introduced to come up and speak. He's not a pastor or anything, he's just giving his testimony. And I'm like, look how happy this guy is. Like he's up there just bouncing around and he's, you know, giving his testimony. And it, it like just sort of struck me as like cool, I guess. I was like, wow, look at this guy, man. If he could be that happy and have all this because of God, like why can't I? But I still was like a little reluctant, you know? I think a night or two had went by and there was a friend of mine on another unit. So I had him moved over to our unit so I could keep an eye on him. So he was smoking a cigarette, it was like late at night, Matt had just went to bed. He started asking me like, you believe all this stuff? And I said to him, I'll never forget, I go, you know, maybe I would believe like if God moved that ashtray across the table. But in my head, I'd probably make an excuse that the fan blew it or something because, you know, God doesn't do parlor tricks. You know, the next day comes and we have this little Bible study like every morning. But on this day, man, I don't know what happened, but like 18 people show up. We went from like four to 18 overnight. We're just getting ready to like, Matt's getting ready to read the thing and he gets called for legal mail. 
And he says, hey, John, would you mind just reading the, the thing for this morning? I'm like, yeah, I got you, man. Don't worry about it. I'll read it. Meanwhile, I'm still not interested. I'm just doing a favor for Matt while he runs downstairs. As soon as he comes back, I'll give him the book and that'll be it. I start to read the Daily Bread and I start to, I don't know, man. I start to have like a weird feeling. I don't know how to explain that feeling, but like almost like, like choked up or something. And I'm like, hold on, guys. You guys, excuse me. I got to go to the bathroom. I said, ah, it must have been the hot dogs at lunch or something, you know? I go to the bathroom and I start having this dialogue with myself. I'm like, yo, are you crazy? Are you going to start crying in front of these lames, man? Like, what's wrong with you? I felt like this, like a wave of emotion come over me. I never like really felt before. I sit down like, ah, sorry about that, guys. All right. I go to read another word and I can't even get the next word out where I just... I start to sob. And as I'm sobbing, I'm, I'm also trying to speak where I'm saying, you know, I just want what I saw that old man had last night and what Matt has. I want to have the ability to know that if I'm like falling backwards, like God is going to catch me. As soon as that happens and I stopped crying and I made that proclamation and I was like, Matt, that was crazy. I felt like cleansed from the inside. That night we went to bed. So I lay down, good night, Matt, see you tomorrow. I'm laying there for a few minutes. It may have been 10, 15 minutes, I don't know. All of a sudden, I was hit with like, yo, that was God moving my ashtray. I tapped Matt and I'm like, dude, I'm like, that was God moving my ashtray. What happened today? Like he knew moving the ashtray was just a parlor trick to me. I'd make an excuse for that. But touching my heart the way he did and, and what I felt, that was undeniable. Like. No matter whatever happens in my life from this point forward, I would never be able to deny that solidified fact that it felt like God had put his hand on my heart. You know, I was the Saul before the Paul, you know, where I would, you know, just look at people and be like, yo, that's weak, man. Like, you know, now all of a sudden you want to find God in prison. And the truth of the matter is, is that thank God, God found me in prison because of God in my life and my relationship with him. This conversation is going on in my home with people that I love and care for and, you know, anything that I could do to help anyone else find the Lord, that would be my greatest pleasure and it would be my, you know, for me, the optimal way to glorify God.